you, you faked me out earlier. <laughs> I know you couldn't see me. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. <laughs> Welcome to St. James Episcopal Church on this fifth Sunday in Lent, and a happy St. Patrick's Day to everybody. Justin, well done on getting St. Patrick's breastplate in there. I like it. I like it a lot. <laughs> we'll save that for Trinity Sunday, right? Um, good to see all of you this morning. If you have a cell phone on you, I invite you to take it out and turn it on, check into social media or share a text, a picture, or a video with a loved one and spread the good news you experienced with us today. And a special welcome to those of you joining us online. We're so glad to have you with us. Please make yourselves known in the comments on the video or leave us a prayer request and everything you need to follow along is there on your screens. And for those of you in the sanctuary this morning, everything that you need to follow along is there in your bulletin or on the screens behind me. And the congregational hymns that are on the boards there, they can be found in the blue hymnal in the pew rack in front of you. Now let us take a moment to be present with one another and be present with our God here in this place. And bring whatever we have experienced this week, everything we are holding on to, bring it here into the presence of God and give it to God knowing that God will take it and transform it into something life-giving remembering that here in this place all are welcome all are enough and all are loved and let us worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness Let's stand and sing hymn 449 in the blue hymnal. Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. Jesus said, the first commandment is this, 
Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors with ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you alone can bring into order the unruly wills and affections of sinners. Grant your people grace to love what you command and desire what you promise, that among the swift and varied changes of the world, our hearts may surely there be fixed where true joys are to be found. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated for the readings. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people." No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. The word of the Lord. Please join me in saying together Psalm 119. How shall a young man cleanse his way? by keeping to your words. With my whole heart I seek you. Let me not stray from your commandments. I treasure your promise in my heart that I may not sin against you. Blessed are you, O Lord. Instruct me in your statutes. With my lips will I recite all the judgments of your mouth. I have taken greater delight in the way of your decrees than in all manner of riches. I will meditate on your commandments and give attention to your ways. My delight is in your statutes. I will not forget your word. Second reading, a reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Christ did not glorify himself in becoming a high priest 
but was appointed by the one who said to him, You are my son, today I have begotten you. As he says also in another place, You are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death and he was heard because of his reverent submission. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered, and having been made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. Having been designated by God a high priest according to the order of Melchizedek. The word of the Lord. Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Now, among those who went up to worship at the at the funeral festival were some Greeks. They came to Pilate and to Philip, who was from Bethsaida and Galilee, and said to him, "Sir, we wish to see Jesus." Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, "The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified." Very truly, I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain, but if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it in e for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will my servants be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. Now my soul is troubled, and what should I say? Father, save me from this hour. No, it is for that, this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said that it was thunder. Others said, an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, this voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now in this judgment of the world, now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up upon, from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. The Gospel of the Lord.
In the name of God, the compassionate and merciful one, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Y'all may be seated. We wish to see Jesus. They were a group of Greeks in Jerusalem for the Passover. Maybe they were converts to Judaism, or maybe they weren't. (laughs) Maybe because the Greeks have always been regarded as seekers of the truth, they were just plain curious about this carpenter turned rabbi whose fame was spreading all throughout their little corner of the world. We may never know the reason for their request, but we can understand it, can't we? Who among us does not wish to see Jesus? (laughs) The very fact that you are here today speaks to that. Whether you are here online or you are here in person, the very fact that you join this worship community in some way, shape, or form speaks to the fact that you wish to see Jesus. And the truth is, there is a whole world out there that wishes to see Jesus. They just don't always say so, usually because they've been hurt by the institutional church. But they love Jesus, and they want to meet Him, and they want to know Him. So what does it mean then for the church, who is the body of Christ in the world, to go and show Jesus to that world? The best way that we do that is to model and pattern our lives on His as best we can. This exchange that we hear in the fourth gospel today gives us a clue to what Jesus' life was about and what was at the heart for people hoping for what Jesus called the kingdom of heaven. It wasn't some prize that folks would get after they died, but was a present reality that folks held in their hands to cultivate in the present moment. Jesus responds to this request from those Greeks who wanted to see him with a metaphor about how a single grain of wheat, if it abides only in itself, is pointless. But if it lets go of its singular existence, if it commits itself into the deep soil, joining with the other microbial organisms and effectively dying, well then, new fruit can be born from it. In that same way, Jesus says, those of you who love your singular existence will lose it. But if you hate it, then you will gain that eternal life. For which you are waiting. Now, at first we hear Jesus say something like folks need to hate their lives, and that comes across really, really harsh. We don't like hearing Jesus say things like that. The Greek word that gets translated to hate is miseo, and it's the root of our word misery. It implies an active ill will. It is the opposite of agape, which is Jesus' word for love. The life that Jesus says we are supposed to hate is a different word than the eternal life that we will inherit. That first life is psyche, which is more akin to the ego or the false self. It's the perfect and abiding 
antithesis of an authentic self. It is the self we project out into the world. It's the root of our word psyche. That's the life, Jesus says, that we have to hate. But the second life is zoe. And zoe is a kind of life that is perfect. And it is the antithesis of death. So Jesus isn't saying that we must literally hate ourselves. You know, mea culpa, mea culpa. No, don't, not to do that over and over again. Or God forbid actually harm ourselves. But what he is saying is that the kind of life that we are really looking for is one that is not found by abiding in ourselves exclusively, but by abiding with others. The first and most significant other being, of course, God. And that's scary, if we're being honest. Especially for those of us who maybe have been hurt by others. Sometimes call it the hedgehog's dilemma. You know, two hedgehogs, the closer they get to each other, the more they hurt each other. Same is true for humans, oftentimes. The closer we get to someone, the more we hurt, or the greater the possibility of the hurt, or the deeper the hurt might be. And so we might avoid getting closer to others or, or living for others. But the alternative is akin to non-existence when it's just us by ourselves. It's only when we are willing to give up that which keeps us living solely for ourselves, including our need for self-preservation, that we can receive the kind of life that Jesus has to offer. And that's the example that he sets as the one who is willing to give up everything, even his own life, for the sake of the other. And in his case, it's for the sake of the whole world. Eternal life, then, is declaring that paradoxical statement that it's only in giving up ourselves that we can find ourselves. This is not only about Jesus' sacrifice, but it is an invitation to his followers, even now, to put the kingdom of heaven first, the love of the other, which begins with God and then extends out to the people of God. But there is one thing that tends to get in the way of that happening. Gets in the way of us living into that example and thereby being able to show Jesus to the world. That one thing that gets in the way is our fear of death. Our culture is overwhelmingly concerned with self-identity and self-preservation at all costs. Every aspect of living tries to cater to our individual needs, which of course makes it easier for us to ignore the needs of others. But what would it truly mean to live for God and for others? Here we find Jesus in the last days of his life, knowing full well what is about to happen to him. And he rhetorically asks, What should I say? Father, save me from this hour? No. Father, glorify your name. When he says this, a voice comes from heaven. Now, 
It's a bit of an aside. In John's gospel, this is the first time that we have heard this voice coming from heaven. Y'all may recall there's two other times in the gospels where we hear a voice from heaven. Jesus' baptism and then his transfiguration on top of the mountain. Those two events don't happen in John's gospel. So this is the first time that we hear this voice. And rather than pronouncing Jesus' belovedness, it's almost as if Jesus doesn't even need to be authenticated in John's gospel. It's kind of cool. But what does that voice say? I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. God's name has been glorified in Jesus coming into the world, and God's name is fixing to be glorified again in Jesus' death and resurrection, which tears away the veil that separates us from one another and makes it possible for us to no longer live exclusively for ourselves, but for one another, which makes the kingdom of heaven truly a present reality. What would it mean, I wonder, for us to move beyond our fear of death, our fear of loss and of change of all kinds, to move away from save me from this hour to glorify your name? What if we, who are those single grains of wheat, let ourselves go and be buried deep in the soil of God's grace and mercy and love? What kind of amazing fruit might be born from that so-called death? That grace, that mercy, that love, they have already been written on our hearts by the covenant that God has made with each of us. The prophet Jeremiah, when he was speaking about this new covenant, he wasn't saying that God was done with the old one on Sinai, and he wasn't talking about Jesus. His was a proclamation of hope that the people would know that God had written God's very self on their hearts. Not written on stone, but on human beings. And we still live into that covenant today. Because of that truth, we know that anything that this world defines as loss as death is folly to God. Just an opportunity for something new, some fresh fruit to be born. To let go of our false selves, our egos, our our psyches. That is the beginning of embracing eternal life, truly. This is the reason we have come to this hour. That's why we are here. We see Jesus pouring himself out in the bread of life and the cup of salvation so that we can be poured out ourselves because, y'all, what we do on Sunday is just the dress rehearsal for the rest of our lives. And if we are willing to to let go and lose our so-called lives, we will find them. And we will not only know that good news for ourselves, but we will go into the world and we will show them. Brothers and sisters, the world wishes to see Jesus. Will you show them? Amen.
in our assignment of seeing and proclaiming Jesus. Let us stand once again and proclaim an ancient creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. Please feel free to sit, stand, or kneel during prayers of the people. As we continue our Lenten journey, let us make our prayers to God for the church and the world, saying, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful God, we pray, we pray for your holy church, for all bishops, priests, deacons, and other ministers that they may be guided and governed by your spirit and led into all truth. In the Anglican communion, we remember our brothers and sisters in the Diocese of Costa Rica and in our own diocese at Saints Peter and John in Auburn and at United Ministry of Aurora. We also pray for our partners in El Salvador and locally at St. Andrew's United Methodist Church here in Skinny Atlas. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our for all those in positions of public trust, that they may promote the dignity of all people, we pray for all those whose lives have been torn apart by war, poverty, and strife of every kind, especially the people of Gaza, Ukraine, Haiti, and the Dominican Republic of Congo, I would also add Sudan. Give them courage to face every challenge and hope for their future. Lord, in your mercy. For all those who are in any kind of trouble, for those who are hungry, lonely, afraid, estranged from those they love, persecuted for who they are, or facing any kind of challenge, may they be filled with your grace and love and be brought to healing and wholeness. We especially lift up, lift up all those on our hearts and minds this day, either silently or aloud. Lord, in your mercy. For those who have died, especially Doris Lanning, Faye Mullins, and Sean Ahern, that they may take their place with all the saints in light. We pray for all those awaiting the resurrection to eternal life, either silently or aloud. Lord, in your mercy. During this season of penance, help us to renounce the sin of racism and every kind of intolerance, that we may promote justice for all people. We pray for our neighbors in the Onondaga Nation and the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, on whose ancestral lands we live, work, and worship. Give us grace to recognize our painful past and be reconciled to you and to one another, that our future together may be holy and bright. Lord, in your mercy. Your for an end to gun violence of every kind, 
stir in us the will to step out of our pulpits and pews and out into the streets to work with officials until the day when our swords are beaten into plowshares. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For the holy and life-giving gift of water in our region, we thank you for all of the resources that you have given to us and pray that we may be faithful stewards of them. Help us to promote creation care in our homes, churches, and workplaces, that we may live into the biblical mandate to be in right relationship with all created things. Lord, in your mercy. For a blessing on the ministry of our office staff, and for Laura Pozesnik, our operations and communications director, and Nicole Bova, our parish administrator, thank you for their tireless efforts to keep our church community connected through newsletters, social media posts, and website updates, through the makings of bulletins and scheduling of servers, and so, so much more. Bless them and the many volunteers who assist them as they work to glorify you through their ministries and give us all grateful hearts for all that they do. Lord, in your mercy. <clears throat> During this time of transition, we pray for our search committee who will call a person to serve as the next rector of St. James. Bless them in their preparation and discernment and may the Holy Spirit lead them to call someone who will serve among us with wisdom, grace, and humor. Lord, in your mercy. For your Holy Spirit to guide us throughout our Lenten journey, may we, by our prayers and fasting, find you at work in the world around us as we grow deeper in knowledge and love of you and become the people you are calling us to be. Lord, in your mercy. For all who visit our parish during this holy season, may we welcome all those we meet with the abundant love of Jesus. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised to your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Amen. My sisters and brothers, the peace of the Lord be always with you. Great to see you all this morning. Um, do you want to commend your weekly to you? If you didn't grab one on your way in, please do get one on your way out. There is an awful lot going on. Uh, this is the last week before the insanity and uh, the beauty and, and uh, joy that is Holy Week. And so um, commend the Holy Week schedule to you. It's there uh, in your bulletin. And we will kick things off next Sunday for Palm Sunday with one liturgy that day. So those of you who normally come to 9 o'clock, you get to sleep in a little bit. It'll be at 10 o'clock. Uh, if you are serving in some capacity uh, next Sunday, we are asking you to please be here uh, no later than, or no, no shorter than uh, a half an hour early so that we can uh, just make sure everyone is is in their proper place. And this will be a combined liturgy that will have elements of all three of our regular Sunday morning uh, liturgies. And it's a great opportunity for, for all three of our worship communities on Sunday morning to come together uh, as a way to, to begin our walk with Jesus in the last week of his life. So I uh, look forward to seeing all of you next Sunday. We will start with the procession of palms outside if Mother Nature allows it not looking great right now, but that could change because this is central New York. And if there's anything I've learned in my time here, it's don't plan to do anything because the weather's so unpredictable. Um, 
But uh, if Mother Nature does not let us be outside, we will start in the parish hall with the procession of palms. Looking forward to, to starting Holy Week with y'all next week. Uh, today at 1215 or thereabouts, the Diversity Book Club will be gathering to discuss Once I Was You by Maria Hinojosa. Uh, if you are part of that group or you would uh, like to be uh, part of that discussion today, uh, come on back around 1215 for that downstairs in the lakeside room. This week we have our final adult formation class uh, that we've been doing during Lent on the history of music in the church with Justin Wee. Uh, that is at five o'clock in the parish hall. We've had some really great conversations uh, this season, and so I hope that you all will come back for the last one this week. Yes, Justin? It's oh, it's in here. Okay. Ah, awesome. So it will be uh, in, in the sanctuary uh, this Wednesday, not, um, not in the parish hall. And uh, don't worry, those of you who participate in evening prayer, we will be done in time for evening prayer uh, at 6 o'clock on Wednesday. We also have our last Stations of the Cross uh, this Friday at 6 o'clock, also here in the sanctuary. And um, it's been a wonderful offering this season and a chance for, for folks to walk the stations and not only to be contemplating the final steps uh, that Jesus took, but to contemplate the sin of racism in our lives and, and to see that connection uh, between the cross and the lynching tree, as it were. Uh, so if you have not had an opportunity to walk the stations uh, here in the sanctuary this Lenten season, I do uh, encourage you to come back on Friday to do that with us one more time before we head into Holy Week. Are there any birthdays or anniversaries this week? Come on up here, Nicole. Anyone else? Is it today? Mazel tov, it's today. Happy birthday, Nicole. And for anyone who is online, we wish you blessings and join me in the birthday prayer for Nicole, who is all decked out for today. My goodness. <laughs> Love it. I don't know it by heart. So, oh, May the strength of God pilot you. May the power of God preserve you. May the wisdom of God instruct you. May the hand of God protect you. May the way of God direct you. May the shield of God guard you against the snares of evil and the temptations of the world. May the Spirit of God bless you in the coming year. Amen. Happy birthday, Nicole. Any other announcements that I am forgetting? Anything for the good of the order, as they say? Now let us walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It's right to give our thanks and praise. It is truly right and good and joyful to give you thanks, all holy God, source of life and fountain of mercy. You have filled us in all creation with your blessing and fed us with your constant love. You have redeemed us in Jesus Christ and knit us into one body. Through your spirit you replenish us and call us to fullness of life. Therefore, joining with angels and dark angels and with the faithful of every generation, we lift our voices with all creation as we sing. Blessed are you, gracious God, creator of the universe and giver of life. You formed us in your own image and called us to dwell in your infinite love. You gave the world into our care that we might be your faithful stewards and show forth your bountiful grace. But we failed to honor your image in one another and in ourselves. We would not see your goodness in the world around us, and so we violated your creation, abused one another, and rejected your love. Yet you never ceased to care for us and prepared the way of salvation for all people. Through Abraham and Sarah, you called us into covenant with you. You delivered us from slavery, sustained us in the wilderness, and raised up prophets to renew your promise of salvation. Then, in the fullness of time, you sent your eternal word, made mortal flesh in Jesus. Born into the human family and dwelling among us, he revealed your glory Giving himself freely to death on the cross, he triumphed over evil, opening the way of freedom and life. On the night before he died for us, our Savior Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. As supper was ending, Jesus took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Remembering his death and resurrection, we now present to you from your creation this bread and this wine. By your Holy Spirit, may they be for us the body and blood of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Grant that we who share these gifts may be filled with the Holy Spirit and live as Christ's body in the world. Bring us into the everlasting heritage of your daughters and sons, that with blessed Mary, the mother of God, Blessed James, blessed Peregrine, and all your saints, past, present, and yet to come, we may praise your name forever. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, to you be honor, glory, and praise forever and ever. 
Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. gifts of God for the people of God.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Bev, we send you out to share communion this week with those in need. May you carry the prayers of all of us as you take this sacrament of Christ's presence. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us bow down before the Lord. Look with compassion, O Lord, upon this, your people, that rightly observing this holy season, they may learn to know you more fully and to serve you with a more perfect will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.